Oh. Yeah, I went to the flea market and got it. I got like 50 watches. I got it by Yeah, we could do things like that. Oh, 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 Okay, well, good morning. It's 1021. I know we usually start at 10 o'clock, but as I posted on, there was unforeseen circumstances. The lady that normally opens the building for us, we found out is in the hospital. She had a stroke. So we told the family that we would pray for her. So I want to start this uh, service this morning by praying for Dawn. Gertman, Lord, right now we bring her before you. She is in the hospital right now, God, and I ask that you touch her body. Whatever is going on in her body right now, that you are the almighty healer. You are the almighty doctor. And I ask that you guide the doctors and nurses' hands. Be there with her right now. Let her feel your presence right now, this very moment, so that she can say at 1021, 1022, I felt a comfort and I felt a peace in my body. I ask for that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. We honor you with our praise this morning, this last day of 2023. In your mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Okay. You've leaned on the Lord this year, have you not? I want to keep on leaning on it.
will see us and say something's different about them. And then when we tell them what's different, then we can invite them to church. And say, you want more of this? You want more in 24? You didn't get enough in 23? Or you didn't have victory in 23? There's more in 24. That's my motto this year. I want more in 24. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I ask that you be with the remainder of this service. Touch Pastor David as he brings the sermon this morning. Give him the anointing that is on his life. Let it breathe out of him this morning. In your mighty, mighty name, we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. So we, might, we might have started late, but that's all right. That's okay. God is in the room. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Oh, I, it, yeah, never mind. Walking, talking, living, moving, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That all, may his praise be continually on our lips. Right. Amen. 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 20 minutes ain't too bad. Yeah. Could be worse. We could still have people coming in an hour later, like I've been at different churches and that happened. Happy New Year! Happy New Year. I'm not going to see you tomorrow, but today's a good day to say Happy New Year. Uh, that's, what was it? 24? More than 24. More than 24. That's good. That's good. Yes. Everybody doing well? Glad to have you all back from your world travels. And uh, we also want to uh, pray for those that aren't here today, that God would bless them. The uh, Lickies have the nerve to go on vacation. <laughs> so we don't we don't like it when people are away, but we understand that they need to be. And um, it's just the way it is. You got to gotta go see family. You got to have some time. Yeah. So we had a wonderful week, crowded week. I think we've reached our maximum at our house. Maybe we could squeeze in one more. Aaron slept on the couch, so um, he doesn't mind. Until everybody starts getting up and making their morning diet Coca-Cola. <laughs> Poppy, Poppy likes this. He used to be a soda jerk. And so every morning about 6.30, 7 o'clock, he comes in and he fills his cup with ice. And somehow he's learned... Yes, but it's somehow he's learned that if you if you fill your cup with ice and pour the coke on it, you lose all the fizz. That's true. So he puts the water in first, he dumps out the water, and then puts the coke in. Well, all that makes a lot of noise. <laughs> all right. So, so I was glad I was on the other end of the house, and Darren's a heavy sleeper. So try that next time if you like the fizz. And he had a case of. Uh, Dr. Pepper Zero. You like Zero. Oh yeah. You need to like at least one. But just try it, Dr. Pepper Zero. He he went through that pretty well. So, well, we have good news. Always good news. God is good. Amen. 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 And sometimes we mistake circumstances for God. Sometimes when bad things happen to good people, we think God isn't good. God is always good. God is always meant for us to be good, to have a good life, to prosper us, to um, give us hope. And um, But the enemy and the things and cares of this world and the fact that Satan came into this world, there's a lot of bad news. How many can say there's a lot of bad news? But God is good. God intended it for good. And I'm looking forward to him, for him to take us back to where he decided it was supposed to be, where God, where it's good. I look back and I look at the scripture that says, there will be no more death, no more crying, no more tears, no more sickness, no more surgery. No more 30 pills a day. No more stints. 
Poppy had a stint last week. Nanny has to have something done with her gallbladder. And they have to try, huh? Not her gallbladder. Something. Mm -hmm. They want to suck something out of her. So, but those, those days will be over soon. And we will, and the doctors will be out of work, but the praisers will never be out of work. Because we have an eternal responsibility. So, the Bible uh, is, is full of the good news. The gospel is really the good news. I get a little tired of preachers that just talk about everything that's bad about everything. Instead of giving good news. Nobody wants the bad news. We got plenty of that. We need to hear the good news. We need to hear what God has that's good. And uh, I don't need to tell you what's wrong with you. You probably know yourself. Just look in the mirror. We'll start there and we'll go from there. But you need to hear a good report, a good word, and a good news. And let's focus on that in 2024. We want more in 2024. Let's look for the good news Amen. of Jesus Christ. His blessings that he intends for his children. He promised the Israelites, if you're obedient, oh, things are going to go well for you. If you're disobedient, things are going to go bad for you. It all comes down to whether or not we trust the Lord. And today I'm going to talk about coming full circle. And I'm using a scripture from Joshua. Joshua chapter 3, beginning with verse 9. You know the story of Joshua, but mostly we know the story of how Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. But this happens before that. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, <coughs> Parasites, Gershvites, Gershites, Amorites, and Jebusites. And he probably will need an exterminator to do it. Sounds like a line of bugs, doesn't it? See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you now. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in the heat. Sound familiar? Sound like a full circle? Yeah. So, when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap at a great distance away at a town called Adam, or Adam as we say, in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowing down to the sea of the Arabah, the salt sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord did what? Stood firm on dry ground. I just stopped and say, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. They stood, when God does it, you're standing firmly. He will not let your foot slip. He will put your feet firmly on the dry ground. Uh, they, it was, they were in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had complete, completed the crossing on, the, on dry ground. Now you remember, they didn't have the ark the last time. They didn't have the tribes the last time they walked through on dry land. They do this time. Joshua chapter 4 verse 19. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. Now we know that God was going to give them Jericho. 
But God is very deliberate in his timing and his symbolism, especially with the Israelites, but in our lives as well. Gilgal means circle. It means full circle. God was bringing them full circle from where they were, and he was repeating. When they crossed in the Red Sea, now they're crossing the Jordan. He brought them full circle, and he did it on the 10th. And 10 means new beginning. And I thought it was interesting. He, they went through the town of Adam, the first man. I'm taking you back to the beginning. Uh, you know, there's, there's things about going back to um, where God met us once before, and God did something in our lives. And some of you are great at testifying of that. When I go to Milwaukee, I like to visit. It's no, it's no longer named the church, and it's no longer the congregation of the church I grew up on. But just the, just the property, just the building, I, I swell up with praise mm -hmm. and, and gr gratefulness for what the Lord did for me then. And if I ever get up to the campground, it would be the same, same thing there. Uh, those, uh, I, I think of those who visit the Holy Land, how proud of, have anybody been to the Holy Land? How, how um, amazing and profound that experience is. It was interesting, one of Renee's gifts to her brother was were glasses from a very obscure, I don't know how you found them, where, um, where God had great revival in the Rowan ministry in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. It was, uh, anybody ever heard of McKeesport, Pennsylvania? Much less the corner of Souls and Beaver. Now we lived, when we lived there, we lived right down the street from there, and that place was a, a less, less than <laughs> South Florida, let's put it that way. Less beautiful than South Florida. But she actually found glasses that had soles and beaver on them because he, she knew how important that spot was for Michael, where he received his calling, where he received. So you talk about full circle and how the Lord just brings us full circle sometimes. The Israelites were getting that new beginning. They were getting a huge do-over. Now, I want to take us back to the first time, uh, to Exodus. They were in slavery in Egypt. Um, they had their first Passover there. God's, uh, God's deliverance, crossing the Red Sea on dry land. Um, Moses sent scouts out to explore Canaan, Canaan, and they came back with a bad report. Not good news, not, not trusting God, but bad news. Numbers chapter 13, verse 31 and 33 says, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. The people then rebelled in disobedience. God forbids that generation from entering Canaan. Uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 11. The Lord said to Moses, How long will this people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all the miraculous signs I have performed among them? Now, we may have had some things happen to us in 2023. And we are looking forward to 2024, but we should always look back and say, praise God that we're here. We're still standing here because of God's goodness and all that he's done. There used to be a song, well, there still is, but how many times must I prove how much I love you? How many times do I have to prove it before you will believe when I say it, it's going to happen? Numbers chapter 14, verse 33 and 34. But you, your bodies will fall in the desert. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies on the desert. 
for 40 years, one year for each of the 40 days you explore the land. You will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. <clears throat> this moment is also mentioned in Hebrews chapter 3. Who were they who heard and rebelled? They, were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt and, went, and, and with whom he was angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned whose bodies fell in the desert? And whom did God swear that they would never enter the rest, his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. The Israelites were forbidden to enter Canaan not because of all their sinfulness. It, for me, if I was God, just the golden calf alone would have made me swat him across the desert. You know, just the fact that they were breaking commandments. No, what was important to God was their unbelief. After seeing the Red Sea part, after seeing God's provision, after seeing the manna from heaven, after seeing water from a rock, and they still don't believe. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Do you think you can be sinless to please God? No, you can't. But you can believe. Mm -hmm. Your belief has nothing to do with your sin. Right. Christ paid for your sin. It's your responsibility to believe. Right. He who believes is saved. <coughs> yeah. uh, it says it in the Word. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. But there is a purpose now for the wilderness. Yeah. And sometimes we go through the wilderness for the, for the Lord to increase our faith, to, to um, bring chastisement, to bring discipline to those he loves. Yeah. It sometimes can be a classroom. It can yeah. be a purification time, a testing of our faith which is fine, but God never intended for us to stay there. Job said, when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. I'm not going to stay in this position. Even though he was in bad, bad, bad shape. You know, you think some of these people we see now that were in bad shape. Job was in bad shape, yet he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Sometimes when I'm not feeling well, that's the last thing I want to say. I want to say, bring me a pill or something. I got to have something. <laughs> but for him to go through what he went through, and, and without the Bible, yes. mm -hmm. right. without Scripture, right. with only a promise that there was a redemption coming, yeah. I know my Redeemer lives. Yeah. And he came out <laughs> as gold. Amen. James chapter 1, we read it. Probably every week. We should just call this James chapter 1 fellowship in the word. Because it's true. The testing of our faith brings something in our lives. It brings about that perseverance that God wants us to have. No matter what comes our way. These, this present situation, these present struggles cannot compare to the glory of that awaits all of us. Matthew chapter 4, Amen. verse 1. Even Jesus had to go through a wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. And it says, you know, a lot of people blame Satan for every, every wilderness, everything that's bad. But look at here. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert. What? what? The Spirit only has for my good. Well, maybe there's good in the wilderness somehow. That's why he leads us into the wilderness, into the place where, there, now, with Jesus it wasn't about training, but it was about overcoming and, and establishing with the enemy who he was. Um, 40, um, 40 is another symbolic word. It means a time of teaching, a time of training. Don't despise your wilderness. 
Allow it to be productive in your life and then get out. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. Let it come on now. <laughs> get your workout finished, Dan, and get out. Right? right? One hour, uh, we were watching the Dick Van Dyke special. He says, he's 98. Wow. And he said, I, I work out for an hour, lift weights for an hour, I swim for an hour, and then I go take a nap. I'm like, okay, that sounds good to me. But he did the perseverance, and then he got out, and he is stronger because of it. Um, come out into the promised land. The final purpose of the wilderness is to step on that dry land and to come into what God has promised. Listen, God promised these people a land of flowing with milk and honey. All good and wonderful things. I, I just, you know, if I saw the ocean part, I'd kind of stand up and take notice and yeah. kind of believe God. But I don't know. I wasn't there. I, I, I can't condemn them or, or judge them based on... But there are other things in my life that bring doubt and bring fear and make me question. And I've got to get rid of those things. Um... Canaan equals the purpose God has designed and called you to do. Your mission, your calling, your destiny. God's promise to you. I can remember God, God working in my life since I was, since I could remember. Um, first of all, I love church. And I'm embarrassed to say we used to play church in the backyard. We had an organist. We had a preacher. We had, oh, good. We should start a support group. <laughs> where where, um, where we, we, had, we had church in the backyard, and we invited all of our friends over to sit in what we called pews. But anyway, I can still remember the day I felt called. I felt called into the ministry. And that is the Canaan. That is the Canaan. Things in my Canaan don't always go well, but the promise was there. I was prepared for the promise, and I'm walking in the promise um, and, and trying to stay true to Jesus. God never intends us for, for us to stay in the wilderness or, or die there. It is meant to bring us into the promise of our lives. The question for us today is what is keeping us from the will? keeping us in the wilderness from entering our Canaan. For the Israelites, maybe for us today, it's doubt. Yes. It's unbelief. Yes. It's right. fear. Yes. Um, which is a form of doubt. Um, it's the security in the known or, or the familiar, I always say. Um, I've seen people stay for years and years and years because it just feels familiar you don't want to walk out into something that isn't familiar, even though God promises great blessings if you follow him. And I, I'm even thinking about when um, God says, you go ahead to the, to the promised land, but I'm not going with you. And he said, if you don't go, I'm not going. What good is it if, we, if you don't go? We need you. Yeah. Remember, um, Numbers 13, 31. We can't. Uh, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes and look the same to them. Remember that we just talked about that. Um, God solemnly promised that he would deliver these nations into the hands of Israel. He said, you go in there, you, don't, you can just sit back and relax. I will deliver them into your hands. And um, when, they, when they did that, when they believed him, walls fell. Uh, they didn't have to go and necessarily do the fighting. The Lord fought the battle. And I, I've seen that happen over and over again. Uh, but at, the fir at first they didn't. This was disobedience. Um, doubt and unbelief is in what God promised and what keeps, what he is capable of doing leads to disobedience and keeps us from the promised land. Um, you know, I even think of, of 
when when we're discouraged that you know we we had our meeting about about church growth and we get discouraged and we get that when we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God brought us together for such a time as this and we just need to trust him and believe and get ready to walk into the promise now unbelief is disobedience when God commanded them to believe um, somehow sometimes bitterness gets in the way some, somehow, if we have to waste our time on the negativity right. in our lives, we are not using that time wisely. Right. We need to, we need to use our time to build our faith, mm -hmm. and that that's hard in the society that we live in that uh, emphasizes a lack of faith, really. And um, we need to fill our lives and build faith. I, I think of. Um, you know, and, and get moving. I think of when, when the Lord said to Samuel after he had uh, anointed Saul, the king of Israel, and that didn't work out. And Samuel was upset about it. He said, did I miss God? Did I, did I, did I? And God finally says, quit mourning over that which I've rejected. Get up and go and anoint David. And sometimes we get stuck in the mud, stuck in the mud. The only way out of the wilderness is to break from the unbelief and the disobedience and, uh, uh, that we have. And it doesn't have to be 40 years, thank God. Uh, I'm glad for that. Um, this time now, when they walked over the Jordan, the scouts came back with a good report. Joshua chapter 2, verse 24. They said to Joshua, the Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. Thank God for Caleb and Joshua. Yeah. They were the ones that made it. The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Mm -hmm. That's a good report. It's time for, for us to believe that God can give us what he has promised. Sometimes it's a, 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 about our children. Sometimes it's about a ministry. Sometimes it's about uh, overcoming sin in our lives, uh, fulfillment in relationships. God can do those things. And the enemy will melt yep. before us. Right. Submit yourselves to God mm -hmm. and resist the devil. We love to say resist the devil and he will flee from you. But if you're not submitting to God, because God has the ability to melt the enemy. Just like if you're watching, what other movie did we see? It uh, was the um, Indiana Jones. Remember the one that faces melted off? For the, yeah, that's how it's going to be. They're, they're, they're melting before us. We saw a few movies all around, all together, if you didn't notice that. Um, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how old you are. It could be, you could be 20 years old. You could be 80 years old. You can step in that promised land for however many years you have remaining. It's about faithfulness. It's about yes. um, having the faith in God and never letting that wane. So sometimes we need to return to the place where we get off track. Um, I know some people that they live for God, they love God, and, and at some point the enemy kind of leads them down a road that's not the right road. Mm -hmm. Seems right. There's a way that seems right in man's eyes, but in the end leads to destruction. That's right. Um, I, I have to look back and I say, I may have taken a wrong turn there. And what do you do when you take that wrong turn? You kind of have to go back to where you took the wrong turn and get on the right road. Exactly. I got, uh, uh, Renee always makes sure that I'm making, I'm, I'm going the right way in the car. I got, a, I got a call from Darren. I was with Poppy and Michael in our car and she was with Nanny and Darren. And I get a call from here, and I'm like, oh, it's so nice when they call me. I love it. Mom says you took the wrong way. 
I said, well, thank you, GPS. Thank you, my little, my marriage GPS. But sometimes if you go the wrong way, you have to make the adjustment. You have to get on track. You, some, some of us, we need to have our own Gilgal, that full circle experience. But aren't you glad that we serve a God that offers a do-over? Yes. A do-over. There's never, there's never too far. The, where sin abounds, grace does, grace does more abound. I'm speaking in King James Version this morning. But um, God offers us always a do-over if we just recognize the fact, hey, we're not on the right track. Some of us haven't met, met that point of desperation, especially in America. We are not desperate enough to follow God the way he wants us to follow him. We're not desperate enough to believe him. You can have a bad tooth, but until it starts hurting, that's when you do something about it. Pain sometimes motivates change. And that's some of the reason why there's a wilderness experience. Because pain will motivate the change necessary to get on track. I can guarantee you to spend a day, just fly to the Haiti airport in Port au Prince, and you will say, get me out of here. Just the airport. But what's the problem with that is the blessing of God can sometimes make us complacent yes. in our walk. And there's right. no desperation right. anymore. Everyone, everything is just handed to us. Right. And, um, you know, even, even in ministry, it's just handed to us. Well, who can I watch today? Yes. Now, I love watching ministers <coughs> and preachers, but they can't replace my relationship. Right. Just because I watch them have a relationship doesn't mean it's helping my relationship. Oh, that was a great word. So, what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about the word? How do we apply it? We get down on our own knees. We get down in our own prayer. We gather together and we believe together. And we allow our faith to grow. But in America today, it's just too easy to let someone else do all the work. And there's no pain that motivates the change. So this new generation of Israelites, I'm sure they were tired of the wilderness. And they were not happy with their grandpappies. And said, let's get out. The, 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 the punishment is over. We have the opportunity. And, and the, God was good to them in the wilderness. Their shoes never wore out. They were fed. And... Um, and, uh, and God took care of them. Um, I can remember having a conversation with Rick Wislocki. He's been here before with little baby, little young Jolfi, not a baby anymore. And um, he knew he was called to hunger. And he spent years called to hungry working in Camp Hill. And always frustrated. Always frustrated. We know when you're not walking on the right path, mm. when you're not walking the right direction, right. there's frustration. And this is the Lord. The Lord just gave me the words right, right, right then in the copy room at the church. And I said, why are you still here? And I'm going, yes. Said, why are you still here? You know you're supposed to be in hungry. You know you're supposed to be moving on in what God... But Daddy was the pastor. Mama was there cooking Sunday supper. There was familiarity. It's hard to step out and then put your family on an airplane, not knowing what is before you. Um, and, uh, and too many people in church just give up at a certain age. There's always something to do. That's right. There's always someone to pray for. There's always a word. I told you before about my great aunt. She knew everything about the Bible. She knew everything about the Lord. And I'd visit her and she had Christian television on and her Bible open on her lap. I'd say, Aunt Becky, haven't you heard everything? Haven't you seen everything? And she'd say, I like to feast on the word of God. At 90 years old, 
I would be like, you know what? Watch The Price is Right or something now. You, you should know it all by now. But um, we don't want to stay in the wilderness. God does not stop working. He is always working on our behalf. I think of Abraham and how he took the wrong turn. And we're still dealing with that today. Yep. Um, but Joshua 5, chapter 12, or chapter verse, chapter 5, verse 12 says, When it was time for them to get out of the wilderness, there was no longer manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate of the produce of Canaan. Talked about that for the last several weeks. They they harvested what they didn't plant. Mm -hmm. They walked into Canaan, a land of flowing with milk and honey. And the produce was already there, right? right. Nobody had to work the ground. The grapes were hanging. Cool. The, the food was there for them. They didn't have to wait for the manna anymore, but God still provided. Yeah. So the question for us today is, what is our promised land? Whatever you hear personally, what have you clearly heard from the Lord? I heard Brenda today say, I'm getting on the phone. I'm getting on the phone. That's a word from the Lord to Brenda for 2024. What is God saying? What is the promised land? You know, where is our desperation right. to just, I don't care. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the unknown. That you may reject me, but they rejected Christ first. Mm. They hated him. They're going to hate you. So that's the way it is. So are you entering your Canaan or are you stuck in the wilderness? I've heard you all say wonderful things about what you plan to do for the Lord, by the way. For our church, it's time for us as a church to walk into our promised land. That's right. That's exactly right. To walk into our promised land. I'm looking for the Jordan to part. Amen. You know, we, we have our challenges. We have people that aren't showing up to open a building. And, uh, but it gave us an opportunity to pray for her. Amen. And we did. Right. And we are faithful in what we need to do when we need to do it. <laughs> but it's time for us to walk in. I believe we've had our wilderness. And the wilderness has done its job in perfecting and preparing us to walk into our promised land. I don't know what that means, but I know it's good news. Yes. Right. I know God has good news. God works all things together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Are you called according to his purpose? If not, get on the right rap road. Get on the right track. You get called according to God's purpose. All things will work out for good. You can't just embroider that and put it on your wall. you got to walk in his will. In obedience, mm -hmm. in faith, faith yes. in belief, yes. your sin doesn't keep you from the promised land. Your unbelief right. keeps you from the promised land. And so I'm believing more for 2024. And uh, we didn't take the time to set up the keyboard today, but and I'll sing it acapella, but you have to sing it with me because I don't, I don't want to do it by myself. Only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe, only believe, oh.
And Lord, first of all today, we recognize with you all things are possible. Doesn't matter what the bank account says. Doesn't matter what the insurance rate is. It doesn't matter what the doctor's report is. We are going to believe the report of the Lord and the report of the Lord is all things are possible and are for our good. If there is a miracle we can point to, we can point to Peter who is on death's door. If God can do it for him, he can do it for everyone no matter what the doctor says. No matter how we get along and how we get around or what age we are, God can do it. If he can give Abraham and Sarah a child in their old age, he can do all yes. things yes. Yes. according Amen. to his plan and purpose. And so, Lord, we believe today and we receive today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We worship you, Lord. We praise the name of Jesus. We praise your name. Look forward to more in 2024. Amen.